Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Smella. I've been a financial educator for nearly 30 years. We're going to talk today about how to grow and control your money safely and securely through private lending. Uh, this is a very powerful, safe financial strategy, whether you want to use it for self-directed IRA, whether you want to use it for investment accounts, whether you want to use it to create uh, periodic passive income, or you want to use it as a long-term growth strategy. We're going to talk again about uh, private lending today. A little bit as far as disclosure is concerned, this information is educational only. Uh, we're not representing any actual cases or results. Uh, private lending can be used in many, many ways. Our focus is primarily on lending money to real estate investors, what we call fix and flip transactions, or to real estate investors for uh, cash out refinances, not lending to owner occupants. There are reasons for that. You can call me later on that. But again, we're looking at primarily doing it for real estate investors for commercial transactions. As with anything, uh, although we're going to be talking today about how to do this in a very safe and secure environment, private lending, when done incorrectly, can pose a very, very great financial risk. So regardless of whether whatever strategy or vehicle you are using for your money and your finances, make sure you get pro uh, proper competent counsel, that it is structured properly, documented properly, before you proceed with any sort of financial vehicle or strategy. Okay, again, we just want to make sure that, again, whatever you're doing, you want to make sure that you are going to benefit from it. So let's look real quickly at fundamental principles of money. What should we really expect our money to do? And when we look at things, there really ought to be four basic things that our money should do for us. Our money should grow regardless of what happens in the economy. We should have the ability to control the performance of our money. Our money should be safe. It really shouldn't be subject to risk of loss. And our money should be secure. We want to be the first to profit, and we want to have multiple layers of security. And those, these four things are, I harp with my clients constantly about making sure that we've got growth control, safety, and security in whatever strategy and vehicles that we leverage for them and their money, because that's what we should be having. But is that really what we've been led to believe? Um, I call this the Wall Street Shuffle. And while I'm not going to you know, beat, beat on our uh, financial industry and, and others in our industry too much, if you really look at it, we've been led to believe an awful lot of things. As far as growth is concerned, when we're looking at primarily stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, it's always, hey, the market goes up, the market goes down. Over the long term, we'll end up ahead Again, hopefully. Do we have any guarantees with that? No, we really don't. So that leads us to the control. How much control do we have over our money? Haven't we been taught that money's kind of complicated? We really need to have the uh, qualified professionals and turn our money over to them in order for us to be successful. What about the safety issue? How many times have we heard, if we want a greater return on my money, I have to accept a greater amount of risk? Everybody's heard that. Is that really true or is that really what's been just accepted as true? And then security wise, market goes up, market goes down, fund money, fund managers, money managers always get paid first. The client, you are assuming 100% of the risk while typically are being last in line. And again, I'm not going to just beat up on the stock market or beat up on, on uh, financial professionals and in financial advisors, of which you may be one who's listening to this today. However, when we really cut it back to the basics, our money should be able to grow. We should have control over it. It should be safe and it should be secure. And when we're going to talk about now about a different lifetime strategy and something that has been used for many, many years called banking as a core financial strategy rather than investing as a core financial strategy. We want to start to turn our expectations around. We want to be able to learn different information. We want to be able to leverage different vehicles. And then we want to be able to create different results. So let's take a look at banking as a core financial strategy. If you think about it, banking's been, been around for about 5,000 years. And when they've done it properly, they have been, they have always, banks have always uh, been successful, okay? 
what do the what do banks do at their core? Well, they really do about three or four things. Number one, they lend money. They do not invest money. You go to your bank when you need a loan. That's what banks do. Banking is primarily lending. They do not invest money. Why? Because it has too much risk. Banks also transfer risk away from the bank. Think about when you get a home loan or a car loan. Number one, they use the car or the home as collateral. They're transferring the risk away. They credit qualify you. They make sure that you've got income. They make sure you don't have that many debts. They want to make sure that they transfer the risk away from the bank. They also make sure that you have insurance on the home or the car. Is that to benefit you? No, it's to benefit them. Then in case something happens, they get paid. So they're constantly transferring risk away from the bank. Banks also turn liabilities into assets. What I mean by that is this, is when you put, let's say, $100,000 into a, uh, let's just say, a CD that may pay 2%, okay? That 2% that they owe you is a liability to the bank. The $100,000, again, that is your asset, but that becomes a liability to the bank. So what do they do? Are they going to sit there and take that $100,000 and just wait till the end of the year and pay you your, your $2,000 of interest? No. They're going to turn that liability into asset by taking that $100,000, lending it out to other people at a higher interest rate so that ultimately they turn that liability into an asset. Hopefully that makes sense. And imagine if you had the ability to turn your liabilities into assets. That would be a pretty good thing, wouldn't it? When they do that, when they lend money out, banks create what's called volume of money which again, let's say they have $100,000 lent out at uh, 8%, uh, so they may make $8,000 on that loan. That's a volume of money. Velocity of money comes into play when they can take that $100,000 loan and maybe it gets paid back or they lend it out two or three or four times a year. Let's say they do a short-term loan every three months that loan generates both volume of money and when they can loan it out three or four times a year, again, that creates velocity of money. So these are all things that banks do. Again, banks are last money in, the first money out. When you buy your house, again, the, the, the bank is the last person to bring the money to the table. And when you sell that house, they're the first ones to get, your, to get the money out. And lastly, banks will always make money. When the borrowers pay, they make money. If the borrowers don't pay, what do they do? They take the collateral back. So when we look at banking as a core financial strategy, when you lend money, when you transfer risk away from the bank, when you turn liabilities into assets, when you create volume and velocity of money, when you are the last money in and the first money out, and when you make money, whether the borrower pays or the borrower doesn't pay, what we talk about this is what we call the second golden rule. We all know the first one. The second golden rule is the bank's got the gold, so the bank makes the rules. So why not become the bank? This is where we talk about private lending. Now, how does private lending work as far as growth control, safety, and security? Let's look at it. From a growth standpoint, what we're able to do is you're able to create both volume and velocity of money. You can create consistent long-term growth. You can create periodic passive income. But the growth will be there, people, okay? It's a great thing. As far as the control, you become the bank. You are the lender. You set the rates. You set the terms. You set the payment schedule. You set the rules of the game. You're first to profit. You proceed when you are comfortable. Is that different than what we've always been taught about Investing money and being the last one in line, it is. So we got growth, we've got control. Thirdly, you've got safety. When we structure loans, private loans properly, your risk of loss is really virtually reduced to zero. You really, again, it's up to you, but you want to keep your loan to value low. Meaning if you're going to lend $100,000 on a house that's worth $110,000, your exposure is pretty doggone high. 
Whereas if you lend money $100,000 on a house that's worth one hundred and fifty dollars or 160000 all of a sudden, again, if the, the borrower doesn't pay and you have to take that house back, you've got plenty of equity in there to be able to go ahead and sell the house, rent it out, do the things that you want to do. Not that you want to do that, but you want to have the safety. And the security, first off, it's collateralized by real estate. We, when you do things properly, you, re, you record and you become a first mortgage holder. You make sure that you also have uh, a promissory note that gets recorded with the mortgage. You get title insurance to ensure that there is clear title and that you are in a first lien position. You make sure that the borrower provides homeowners or hazard insurance in case something happens. You can even require that the borrower has life insurance and that you are the beneficiary of that portion of the life insurance, again, in case something happens and while they're rehabbing the house, something catastrophic happens and they die. At least you are, again, in, are in the secure, safe position. So when we look at private lending, you can have the growth, you can have the control, the safety, and the security, or if you don't do it right, it can come back to bite you in the butt. So that's why we want to make sure and do things correctly. Additional benefits that can be seen through private lending. One of the big things that we see is we really have clients that break through the, the conventional beliefs. Again, what we're doing now is we're starting to think and act like a banker, not as a consumer, not as an investor. We are thinking and acting as a banker. So we create different expectations and you create different results, which is great because you're ultimately taking and you're, you're flipping that risk reward paradigm. Another thing is through what are called self-directed IRAs. A lot of people have IRAs from uh, maybe existing IRAs or from, uh, from, from uh, companies they used to work with. Through self-directed IRAs, you have the ability to roll it into a self-directed custodian where you now have a lot of other options other than just the typical stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You have the ability to be a private lender. You can do other things in real estate. You can buy gold. You can invest in businesses. There's virtually an, an unending list of what you can do through these self-directed custodians so that you can, again, create a greater opportunity for long-term growth and long-term passive, uh, long passive income. Um, thirdly, if you just have investment accounts, so you don't necessarily have qualified monies from an investment account standpoint, as with a, uh, an IRA or a self-directed IRA, what private lending does is it creates true asset diversification. You know, you, you hear that a lot. You want to diversify your, ask, your, your assets. You don't want all your eggs in one basket. Well, the reality is most people, all they have is different mutual funds, different stocks, different bonds. Guys, that is all one asset classification. True asset diversification means maybe some money in stocks and bonds, maybe some money in private lending, maybe some money in gold and silver, uh, maybe some money in other real estate. Those is That is true asset diversification. Private lending becomes one of them, which again, as I hope you're seeing, can become a very safe and secure way to uh, create either long-term uh, long growth or monthly or periodic passive income. One of the other great things about being a private lender is it really reduces or virtually eliminates um, fees, management fees, or what we call as wealth drains. Uh, if you have money that is just in investment accounts and you become a private lender, there are no advisor or money management fees, period. The only fees that would potentially be involved would be if you do have monies in an IRA, when you set up an account uh, with a self-directed IRA administrator, they typically do have um, fees, uh, which are typically uh, less than you would have with uh, managed money. But um, in, in the scheme of things, as your money increases, your fees do not increase as they do when you have managed money. And that, again, the, the wealth drains uh, can really, really reduce your monies over the course of your lifetime. Another great thing is you're able to build long-term relationships. When you lend money to real estate investors for fix and flips, 
um, they end up winning because they have the ability to go out and do what they do well, which is buy houses, rehab them, turn around and sell them. You have the ability to win because you're getting the passive income as the lender. As they cre- as you do those the, the volume and velocity with those, you create very, very good relationships. You help to improve uh, the local e- economy. You help to get other homeowners into houses eventually uh, when the investor turns around and sells it. They, they're either going to sell it to another investor or to a, a uh, primary resident. So you're really able to build very, very good long-term relationships. And the other thing that's great about private lending is whether the economy is good or the economy is bad, real estate, there is always there are always houses available for investors to fix and flip. There are always investors looking for cash out refis so that they can uh, go out and free up money to do other things. So as a private lender, there is mu- there is always a market out there for you to go out and potentially help people and help yourself as well. So let's take a look at how a how this uh, this scenario would work. Um, so you've got a real estate investor that's looking for a house to buy, rehab it, turn around and sell it. So let's say they've got a house they can buy for seventy thousand dollars, <throat> and they're going to need about thirty thousand dollars to repair it plus have some reserves and you always want to make sure that you're uh, when you're lending money for invet for the uh, uh, fix and flips that they do build in reserves into their repair costs. So they're looking for let's say a hundred thousand dollar loan and the after repaired value is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that's based off of comps that uh, of comp what are called comparable sales, or comparable houses that have already sold in that in that general area. So as a private lender, you want to make sure that all your bases are covered. And this is something that I help and my partner and I help uh, the private lending partners do is to look through the loan package, give them guidance as far as is the value really there? Is this something that makes sense? So in this scenario, we've got a loan. They're asking for $100,000 and it's 67% of the after completed value. You look at it and say, hey, that looks like a good thing from my side. You go ahead and make an offer to the borrower. Say, look, we're going to do a ten, we're going to do a loan for six months, give you six months to buy the house, rehab it, turn around and sell it. And we're going to charge 10% interest. Now they may say, hey, we may need a couple months, uh, we may need eight months, nine months, ten months. Well, maybe you throw an extension clause in saying that we're going to go ahead and do it for six months, and that if you want to. We can extend it out for an additional three months at an additional cost of 2% per month. Again, you're the bank. You set the expectations. You dictate what the rules of the game are. So the borrower says, okay, that's great. We're going to go ahead and do that. Um, So they borrow the $100,000. And then at closing, you can either disperse the $70,000 for the purchase plus the $30,000 for the repairs or Maybe you just want to disperse the $70,000 for the purchase, hold the $30,000 of repair costs with the title company, then have them go out, get the repairs done, and disperse the funds on the, uh, once, they're, once they're done. Again, it depends what you want to do because you're the lender. So you may look and say, you know what? Again, I don't need the interest. I don't need any monthly payments. So we'll set it up to just say that at uh, at the once they sell the house, so they repair the house, once they turn around and sell it to their either final end occupant, um, you get your hundred thousand dollar principal back plus the ten thousand dollars of interest. Or if it took them longer than six months, it would be even more interest on it. So when you look at doing this in a first year result, let's say you're able to do this. You 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 lend a hundred thousand dollars secured by a first mortgage. It generates $10,000 of interest that that happened in a six month period of time. And let's say now, so you've got $110,000 in your pocket, which creates the volume of money. Now, let's say you go out and do that a second time. Maybe you go back to that same investor and say, hey, go find another house. You loan them out the 110,000. So now at the end of the year, you started with $100,000 you ended the year with $121,000, which actually creates a 21% uh, 
growth on your money, and you did that with safety and security. You were the first person in line. You were the last one to bring the money in. You were the first one to get your money out. Everything worked out well. When you do this properly, it can happen very, very well, okay? Now, there may be some times when you've got a couple months that your money sits stagnant. You don't want your money sitting stagnant. You always want to be out there lending it out. And again, those are things that we work with both real estate investors. We work with the, with the uh, private lending partners so that we can create a very, very good business model for everyone involved. So let's take a look at a, a little bit of a longer term type thing. So let's say you want to generate yearly passive income. Maybe you are somebody that's uh, already retired. Maybe you're 65, 70 years old. You've got monies in the market that you know is uh, is at risk, and you want to create yearly income. You'd love to be able to create additional income, but you don't want to have the uh, the ups and downs in the market. Well, again, let's look at. Let's say you invested or you you lending a hundred thousand dollars, and you do two loans a year at ten percent interest. What that does is that generates $20,000 of yearly income to you without ever having your principal or having to dip into your principal. So hopefully you can see this. This can be a very, very good way. Private lending can be a very good way to create additional income on a passive side for you and your family. Let's also look at it. Maybe you're somebody that's only 35 or 40 years old, or maybe you are 50 years old and you've got money in, but you want to have it in, in an IRA or an investment account, and you want it for a longer term. So again, you take the $100,000, let's say you lend out at 10%, and you do two loans a year, which creates a 21% annual growth. If you leave it in there and just let it compound, after five years, that $100,000 would turn $271,408. After 10 years, it grows to 736,000. 15 years creates over $2 million. And after 20 years is $5.5 million. And again, folks, what this is, is this is doing two loans a year with your current balance twice a year at 10%. Now, those are some big numbers. They really are. Can it happen? Yes, it actually can happen. Will it happen? Hey, maybe it's going to be somewhere somewhere in between there. But let's take a look at this now. Let's just say after 10 years or after a period of time, you've, you've accumulated $736,500. And then you want to just say, look, you know what? I just want to do one loan a year and I want to start generating income off of that. So you just do one loan a year at 10% interest that creates $73,650 of annual income for you doing one loan a year without ever touching your principal of $736,000. Hopefully, folks, you can start to see that private lending, when it's done correctly, can be a very, very positive financial strategy and a financial vehicle for, again, growth, control, safety and security of your, of your money. When you look at, at information like this and you start to look at the big picture as far as why are banks always typically the largest buildings in any city, it's because of this. It's because of the lending. It's because of growing, controlling money safely and securely in a lending type of a situation. Can you do the same thing? Absolutely, when you do it correctly. A few resources here for you uh, before we finish up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Banker's Code. This is a book by a gentleman by the name of George Antone. Awesome, awesome, easy to read book. Uh, there's a free PDF version that you can pull up on, the, on your computer or uh, you can get a, a hard copy or get in touch with me. I can, I can mail you out a hard copy. Excellent, excellent book. Um, a YouTube video that myself and my partner did um, called Bank Without Limits, nine minutes long, goes into some of the similar situations that we were looking at here as far as private banking. Uh, this is actually a way to become uh, your own system of banking 
leveraging a very, very properly structured financial vehicle that we have some clients that become their own system of banking. They create the monies and then we use those monies for, for private lending situations as well. So again, two good resources. My information is below. Again, my name is Mike Smella. My partner is Lupe Hinojosa. Uh, Lupe has been in the industry for about 40 years. I've been in the industry for about 30 years. Uh, Lupe has been on the, he's a, he is a uh, board member of the Toledo Real Estate Investors Association. So between the two of us, we've got an awful lot of uh, very, very good information, a lot of great uh, experience in the industry. And we want to be able to help and share that with you. So whether you are a real estate investor looking for money, whether you are somebody looking at ways to create and grow your money safely and securely, whether you are a financial professional that has clients that are looking for other ways to diversify, please reach out to me. Uh, we would love to be able to have the opportunity to talk with you and uh, teach you some more. Um, every good relationship starts with a conversation. So please reach out. Hopefully this information was very, you find it very valuable. Uh, go back over it, call, reach out with any questions and let's uh, see if we can't help you along your way. Appreciate your time today, folks. We are checking out for now. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.